for you. Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I'm going to run through a setup concept that I've been using for quite some years now for my small batch test brews for new recipes in development. I will begin with an overview of the core equipment needed and I will then share recent brew day footage running through how to do this. My aim with this video is to inspire more brewers with larger brewing systems to experiment with smaller setups for recipe development and to inspire new brewers into a budget yet simple and fun entry route into homebrew. So let's get started. At the heart of the setup is a stainless steel pot. Mine is 14 litres or 3.7 US liquid gallons in size. Your pot size will dictate the volume that you are able to brew. I would suggest using a pot with double the size of your intended maximum batch size. One important feature on your pot is to have graduation markings. Some also opt for a tap at the bottom also for transfer. You're also going to need a mash bag. Do not worry so much about the size, the one I use is very much an oversize as it can accommodate 35 litre systems. But these are easy to roll up inside your pot or outside. This bag will hold the grain during the mashing process. I also suggest getting some small clamps like these for holding the bag to the pot. For heating control you will need one of these sous vide systems. Because of how these work you will need to protect these vents otherwise your bag will get stuck in them. The cheapest and easiest way to do this is to repurpose one of these mesh canisters used for dry hopping in kegs. I cut mine down to fit my unit size using regular kitchen scissors, but naturally sizes do vary. This piece then just slides in as shown here. I also use these which are sold in kitchen stores cheaply. These allow you to pour directly from the pot and offer a bit of filtration at the same time. Alternatives are to use a pot with a tap or a siphon, which you are going to need anyway for transfer from your fermenter into bottles or a keg. You are also going to need something to ferment in, a temperature controller, plus something to aid you into actual temperature control. In my case this is some heating mesh as shown on the far left. Once this is all put together for the first part of the brewing process then it will look something like this. You will note that the sous vide unit that I'm using here is from Inkbird, a brand well known to home brewers already. I actually picked this up quite recently and I have to say it is a large upgrade on my last device of this type because it offers so much more technology and functionality which I will show you soon as well as being able to heat to much higher temperatures. So if you do not already have a sous vide device then this is one that I can certainly recommend. If, like me, you were married, then this is certainly a less stressful purchase to make compared to regular homebrew stuff, as it can actually be used for cooking normal food too. A nice double whammy purchase. You will also see that I have a raised stainless steel tray in the bottom of my pot. This is because I also use a heating plate underneath to ramp up temperatures faster. You do not really need this, but it does save a little bit of time. Naturally you can also use your stove's hot plate too. When mashing I suggest being very careful and minimal with other heat sources, as you really want the accuracy of the sous vide unit to be in charge. With this now explained, let's now go through the running order. With your pot all set up now, as already shown, you should now add in your water. To calculate your water I suggest going with brewing sauce that will do these calculations for you. This style of brewing is known as brew in a bag or BAB for short and has no sparge. Personally I highly recommend Brewfather software. Brewfather will make light work of converting any larger recipe down for your pot volume. And naturally at the same time it will work out all of the water volumes that you need. It is now time to heat up your water. With this Inkbird unit this is all done in an easy fashion with the Smart app. This is certainly very useful if you want to go and do something else while you are waiting. If you decide to use a heating plate like this one to speed things up then set it to the lowest power level and also set it to a lower temperature than desired. In this case I want 65 but I am setting to 60. This is to combat temperature overshooting which is common with such items. Our next step starts once we have our mashing temperature reached. A common one is 65 degrees Celsius or 149 degrees Fahrenheit. In this step we add our grain and mix it into our water. I strongly suggest adding your milled grain in small amounts at a time. Adding the grain via a small jug like this one is a great way to go. You should then mix this into your water as shown here to ensure that all of the grain is nicely wet and that you have no clumps of grain. The downside of not doing this properly is a lower level of alcohol and more bitterness in your end beer to what is intended. You will note that as you add more grain this will progressively need a bit more attention. No worries, you will soon get the hang of this. 
Once your grain is in place and nicely stirred in, then I suggest you set a timer for at least 1 hour and 15 minutes. The Inkbird device that I'm using has all of this within its app, but if your device does not, then a simple timer like this one or your mobile phone will also work. Now it's also fair to say that if we were using a modern homebrew system with full recirculation, then you can certainly do this mashing process in an hour or less. But with this method you are much more manual, so a longer period is going to give you better results, hence why I suggest the extra time. During this mashing time I recommend that you stir and break up the grain as much as you can. I aim to do this every 15 minutes, so 5 times in total for about 3-5 to five minutes each time. Do not think that you can simply leave the grain for 3 hours and not stir, this will not work. Again, if you do not do this then you run the risk of a lower amount of alcohol and a higher amount of bitterness in your end beer. You will notice that as your mash goes on the colour of the liquid will change gradually. The grain you have used will determine how much darker this will go. This particular recipe is not a super light one as you can see. Once the mashing process is finished then remove all of the clips that hold your bag and add it to a bucket. Your task now is to squeeze the bag to get as much liquid out of it as possible. At one time there was a rumour going around that some took as fact that this would actually add astringency into your own beer. This is simply not the case and should be ignored. I see this information get repeated sometimes on online forums even now, which is always a pity to see. We can now add back our reclaimed losses back into our pot. At this point it is important to check that we are past the minimum liquid level of our sous vide unit. I am brewing an especially small batch here so this is not going to be suitable and I will simply use my hot plate. The hot plate is not particularly accurate but seeing as our next step is to heat to the boil there really is not the same concerns with accuracy as we have with mashing. So as long as we can see a boil then all is good. When using the hot plate for this step I use the full power. I also find that setting to 100 celsius is enough for a decent boil, your plate or stove may be different of course. Because I no longer have the sous vide unit measuring temperature I am measuring separately. It is important to keep an eye on this because once the boil starts you need to perform the next steps quickly, primarily to avoid a boil over. Once you are at boiling temperature then you will note that there is this foam on top. This is simply protein and I suggest that you skim it with a stainless steel spoon so that it drops down. Some brewers will remove this using a large spoon or ladle instead but I prefer to stir it in based on taste. This step is an important one to avoid a boil over and you will find that you will need to deal with this as the boil period goes on. You can see that I'm wearing gloves while I do this, naturally because this is boiling things are going to get rather hot and the gloves will protect you against this and including potential burns. Once the previous step is done then you can then start your boil timer and usually there will be a hop addition to add straight away. Once this is added you should give this a really good stir in so that the recipe works as intended. If you have any whirlpool hops in your recipe then you can create this effect very easily with a vessel of this size by using a stainless steel spoon and simply stirring more aggressively. Naturally you will stop heating before you start this step and you will note that it does not take long at all before the temperature will start dropping down quickly, so adjust your stirring for these additions depending on the temperature desired. The next step is the cooling down of your wort down to a temperature that is suitable for your yeast. For smaller batches your kitchen sink is perfect, simply add cold water and then add your pot with its lid on. Then you can add ice cube trays and similar from your freezer to increase the cooling effect. The items I am adding last here are stainless steel ice cubes that are used in whiskey and such like. They are better used for this I find. You will find that it is faster to wait 10 minutes and then change the water and add fresh items for cooling to complete this process. There are also key benefits to end beer clarity to be found in doing this as quickly as possible, so do what you can here. It is vital to have everything that your wort now comes into contact with to be clean and sanitary. There are various homebrew products that can be used to ensure this. Contact your local homebrew store to help you if needed. Here I am showing various smaller parts but naturally this also includes your fermentation vessel. 
It is then time to transfer your wall, and there are various options as already discussed earlier. Do not be surprised if your wall will look darker inside a transparent fermenter like this one, compared to how it looks while being transferred. Other notable points are that it looked clearer before the boiling process. Do not worry about this, it is to be expected. You should then pitch your yeast and then add on your airlock. There are various different types of airlock, this S type is my personal favourite. You should now place your fermenter and set it up for fermentation. Here I'm using fake yeast, hence why my setup is simply heating only and the temperature used is pretty high. The temperature controller I'm using here is especially useful for such a setup, as it actually has two plug inputs for heating, as well as Wi-Fi control. This is also made by Inkbird and I mostly just use their various temp control products for my fermentations. You will note that the temperature probe as highlighted on screen is held onto my small fermenter using plumber's putty. This is reusable and a fantastic way of getting an accurate reading. This putty will stick and hold onto glass, plastic and stainless steel. Once fermentation is over then you can transfer into bottles or a keg. I have covered these processes in other videos on my channel. The final step in this process is the tasting. Here is a look at the finished beer from this test batch, just so you can see the end transformation. It certainly looks the part, but I am yet to perfect this recipe, so I will be tweaking this one further. All part of the fun, and due to the small batch size, I am now able to move quickly on to the next version. I do hope that you found this video useful, informative and interesting. If so, why not consider liking and subscribing? For further support you can join the channel's Facebook group, and if you would like to support the channel then check out the channel's merchandise store, as all profits go back into the channel. Until next time, happy brewing!